Hey, Steve Bezik, Argo Deck. Yeah, we're just two guys hanging around the shower. Singing in the shower today. Singing in the shower today. Got my good friend Aaron Jones here from Canada, from the island of Grand Manan Island, New Brunswick, Canada. Grand Manan. Grand Manan. Manat? Manan. 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 Okay, I just want to make sure I'm saying Grand Manan Island, east coast of Canada. Right? Bay of Fundy. Bay Go of Fundy. to uh, Quaddy Head and hang around. That's kind of funny. The Bay of Fundy. Anyways. Today's topic, we're going to talk a little bit about the details of the owner's shower here. We have, obviously, we have a bunch of body sprays, we got shower heads, but there's a bunch of other details that I think really make a shower successful. And, uh, you know, Aaron is a very, um, a gentleman who's very fond of function, right? He likes pretty things, but it's got to work first, so it's got to pass the function test. It's got to pass the function it's test. It's got to pass the function test. So here you have it. We're in a shower. We're probably about, I don't know, it's probably about a little over six feet long. It's about 40, four and a half feet wide, 40, 48 inches, somewhere in that range, right? Yeah, we're there. Yeah. We have a, a beautiful bench here. Now the bench, we have some steel angles that are underneath there. These guys actually did a really good job. If you notice, it's solid underneath there. It's actually C. It's like a giant stone channel that they did these mitered corners on, and it basically slides on top of the three angles. But when you're talking about function, a couple things come to mind. A nice good size bench. This one's about 14, or no, this one actually is about 16 inches. So I see them a lot of them, like 10, 12 inches. Like you're in a shower, slippery surfaces, you get down to that narrow dimension, you put the person at risk of like, slipping off, smashing their back, or, you know, hurting themselves. Yeah. But this well, is well done. The, the larger bench there, I think, works. And then we build that up. We always build out this. I know a lot of people like niches. I'm not a niche fan, right? And they get expensive. They're, you know, 8, 10, 12 inches in width. Here, I get the full 48 inches. I can build that wall out. To whatever dimension, I can get a good five inch shampoo shelf there. Not only that, but from strictly a functional perspective, that is easy to clean. That is easy to clean. It has two inside corners right. versus if you had like three or four little niches across here, you end up with six, eight, twelve little inside corners. Pain, painful to clean. Initially, the shower looks good. Come back in a couple years, there's usually you know, yeah. those things right like, in the corner. We'll they call it they start the accumulation. You know, one of the things I also like about this that we've had as a, you know, talking afterwards, you know, homeowners, particularly the wife, she goes out shopping. She doesn't buy the little shampoo bottle. She buys the very large shampoo bottle. So sometimes it doesn't even fit in the niche. Here, you're wide open. So you can buy a bottle that's literally 24 inches tall and it fits in this situation, Absolutely. right? So, Growy, all Growy devices. Sort of um, a uh, standard name for quality in yep. a lot of shower hardware. We have our overhead rain head, we have some dual shower heads, we have body sprays. Um, all that stuff is great. I mean, you can go online, you can find that all out. But what I like to talk about is how you position things and what you do. Um, one of the things that I take through my design life is years ago, I had somebody tell me, you know, they went to a presentation. Uh, it was actually Peter Yost, my good friend. And he said he heard probably one of the best comments ever at a presentation. And the woman got up, she was talking about accessibility to things. And she said, all of us are temporarily fully functional, which when you think about it, it's like, wow, that's pretty amazing. Because when you think about accessibility or, you know, handicapped, however you want to label it, um, the issue is, is we always think of somebody that has some type of functional, questionable issue that they're trying to solve their life for, right? And then we never think about ourselves, hey, I can walk today, I can do this, I can do that, but there might be a day where I'm on crutches, or I need a walker, or I might be in a wheelchair, or... I have my leg has to be bent 90 degrees because, you know, like our good friend Ross, he 
um, cut his Achilles, right? Ruptured his Achilles. So there, there's, there's times in our lives, and I've actually had it when uh, a few years ago I had surgery, I couldn't navigate a set of stairs for about eight or nine weeks. And so fortunately we had a bathroom downstairs, but it was the lifting of the leg and, and such that really challenged me. So to have things like a good zero clearance shower, and then to have the proper shower head. So yes, we have our standard shower head, but over here, we're gonna have a slide on a hose. And I always wanna put those next to the bench, right? So now, if I'm handicapped, or if I'm not fully functional, then that means I can sit down here and I have a portable shower head I can grab and I can do everything I need to do from the seated position. We did one of those in our own home. Now, we don't have a bench in our own shower, but we made the shower big enough that if we had to install a stool, yep. you could. Because I've been in the industry long enough now, unfortunately, I've seen uh, some friends get injured along the way. And even though it's temporary quite often, just makes your life that much easier for the six weeks, the 12 weeks, while you're going through rehab. Um, a wand, it's an easy addition. Highly recommended for any shower. Right. And, you know, so the zero clearance coupled with a shower head for that, having this size well so that if you had to bring a wheelchair in, you could bring a wheelchair in, you could transfer it to the bench, you have that showering capacity there, you have the shampoo shelf readily available. And these things also function well for a person that's fully functional too. So it's not only that we're solving for them, but this is a shower that can cater to the full spectrum of people. Um, you might say an entire life cycle. An entire life cycle. Well, there you have it. The other thing that I like to do that I know a lot of builders for reasons for economy, I like to sheathe our openings in solid surface material and then bring the tile up to that edge or in this case, bring it up to that inside edge. But I like to look at this. I don't want to see tile joints and see tile cut here and turning the corner. That's a pet peeve of mine. I like to have that finished off. I don't know if you have an opinion on that. I have an opinion on this. Um, I'm stealing this. I'm stealing <laughs> this detail. And the reason, and it's not so much just the look, but from strictly a durability standpoint, uh, quite often in our market, we'll see shooter strip. So we won't see raw tile edges. But you have maybe a surface wrap this corner or that maybe isn't. You have a surface wrap this corner that maybe isn't durable enough to withstand water for the long term. Yeah. And you don't want to see water damage in a bathroom, especially in this type of situation after a year or two years. You want this to remain beautiful for the long haul. Right. And that is a killer detail. <coughs> and then, of course, lastly, we're not going to get into it because I don't have the tool, but notice that we have a hard mortar joint here, and then it stops, and these are all open joint. Also notice there is no shower drain on this tile. So this is a customized shower pan. This is all by porcelain, so don't even bother trying to get it up. No, I'm they're all, get it up. I'm they're all gonna, tied. But, I'm just going to uh, show the people. Yeah. So there's a joint under there. We have, the, we have a shower pan that is downstairs. We haven't installed that bathroom, so I'll be able to break that up and I can show you what that looks like um, down there. But the idea here is that you take the shower, the water just trickles through all the joints in the tile, goes into the shower pan below. The shower pan below, actually, you'll appreciate this from a functional standpoint, has two, two drains. One's actually upstream. So if the downstream one clogged for any reason, the water would simply go upstream a little bit and then flow into the backup drain. But again, that allows us to keep this pretty much at that same level, make it totally accessible. We put the door on here, call it a day. Aesthetically pleasing. And aesthetically pleasing. And I know a lot of you out there are gonna say, whoa, what about the mold that grows? It's all treated with microban. It doesn't sustain mold growth down there. There is some cleaning to it, but there is a tool, we just don't have it here, that you slide in, it's like a little stainless steel T-bar. You turn it and you pull it up, you can pull all those tiles up, and then you can clean that pan, 
you know, monthly or quarterly or whatever it is. I don't think it's going to get nearly as dirty. We're going to get a whole bunch of comments, but that's all right. You know, everybody has their opinion. The homeowner's excited. They're happy. My job is complete. You evaluate it the way you need to evaluate. You make your choices, and then you do what you need to do. All right? I'm going to make one more argument for you that will help you out on the cleaning. There you go. What's going to be easier to clean? Pulling up a few tile and cleaning a pan or cleaning grout lines? All right. I'm going to argue for the pan. Yeah. Yeah. The grout lines, those <laughs> become a challenge. And it's a challenge that never ends. No. Right. And no. it just gets cumulatively worse. Absolutely. Because they get dirty. You clean them, but you don't clean them 100%. You clean them 90%. So you've got 10% residual that now gets dirty. You clean it again. And now there's 20% residual from the original, so you run that challenge uphill. Or even worse, you clean them and you remove just that micro layer of the surface and you open up some of the pores to allow for more stuff to attach and accumulate. So, anyways, there you have it. Good friend, Big Dog Construction. Most people know him by Big Dog. You know, the funny thing about social media is everybody has their name. But nobody gets known by their name except for maybe me because I use my name in my uh, Instagram handle, but a lot of people don't. Big Dog Construction, but better known as Aaron Jones. Give him a follow on Instagram. He puts stuff up all the time. Um, follow him on YouTube. If you're following me on YouTube, thank you very much. If you're not following me on YouTube, smash that subscribe button. Give me a follow, tell all your friends, drop some comments in there, be respectful, but I'll try and, you know, film or show you what I can show. Until next time, long live our buildings. I'm Aaron Jones from Big Dog Construction, and me and Steve are singing in the shower. All right, so we jumped downstairs. Remember I told you we had the uh, shower pan. We're doing exactly the same, so... This is what underneath that tile looks like. It's a grooved shower pan. It's treated with microban. Now, the little subtleties and difference between this one and the one upstairs, because of the number of shower heads, body sprays, etc., that one actually needed the backup drain. This one can get away with just the one drain there, but you can see the whole shower pan drains to that. The tile then sits on the top of these grooves, open joint, and it allows you to drain underneath there without having to put in a linear drain or any of those issues. So that's what the shower pan looks like.